What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of Soul Food Sundays. My name is Keita. Thank you for joining me. If you have been following the kid, you probably noticed that I was MIA last week. <laughs> I just had a lot going on and I needed a moment to digress. But I am back and ready to bring forth a message for you all. I hope that you are well. I hope that this message finds you well. And if it didn't find you well, I hope that it leaves you well. So just stick with me for a little minute as I share uh, some things that I have observed and downloaded. Um, um, as of late, some things I've observed about the energies and that have been poured into my spirit. Not only personally, but collectively. So I will be sharing those things with you all. And we are going to get directly into it because i've received um a message of initiation by air being represented by the number 24 so this is going to speak to our concept of home and relationship as well as achieving balance and alignment um and that is from the light workers oracle but i'm going to clarify that message with the osho zen tarot deck and also the wild animal um i think it's called a wild elemental oracle deck which is going to give us some spirit animals so we know what energies we need to tap into as we work through this initiation by air so if you've been following me you know that we've gone through an initiation by fire <laughs> we uh have been experiencing some initiation by water and now it's an initiation by air forsake not the assembling all of the elements are coming together to make us whole to heal us and to bring about new earth and so before i get deep off into the message we will pray um because although i have pulled the card from the um the light worker oracle initiation by air we are going to shuffle to get the messages from the other two decks so father god mother earth ancestors and spirit guides we thank you for your love and light and welcome you into this space i ask that you speak to me and through me on behalf of the collective to bring forth the best message for our highest good spirit please speak to us as it relates to this initiation by air that the collective is to experience, give us the knowledge and wisdom to maneuver and to navigate this energy as we move closer to you and closer to who you created us to be. And so it is, y'all. So yeah, this initiation by air. The message came to me personally. I mean, I am a part of the collective, but I'm also seeing where it is relative to people around me. And so we're going to need to tap into this air energy. You know, air represents our thoughts, our communication, our mentality, the things that generate in our mind, our patterns that, um, manifest as our actions and our words and our our conversations and so in this image here you have doves flying from this individual's chest um it looks like white and gold light and there is peace coming from this person's center um and so and it's an angel it's a bare-chested angel who has surrendered to the peace of the most high so this is very much speaking to those things that trouble us, that plague us, that run over and over in our mind, those scripts of fear and um, things that keep us from moving forward, being cleansed, cleared, and renewed so that we can experience internal peace in our mind and hearts. And we're going to dive deeper into it, but before we dive deeper into the initiation by air, I just want to share like what I've been observing in the downloads because some time ago, I forgot what episode it was. It might have been like a leftovers or something. We were talking about lumpy rugs, people sweeping things under lumpy rugs, 
and we've all done it we've all tried to avoid handling something that we know we need to handle moving forward from or taking care of confronting something we know we need to confront and i'm seeing an ant <laughs> which is telling me although i do have a bad ant problem for some reason in my house that we're needing to put in that work and it's just one ant um you know ants are known for working hard that ant energy but we're needing to um roll up our sleeves and put in the work to bring about the change it is that we seek or get in alignment y'all about to see this ant crawl on this on this uh card it looked like oh it turned around gone now thank god ants are, are harmless it's not like it's a fire ant or anything but it's literally on the top of the card <laughs> like it's trying to eat away at the card or something okay here it come you see it <laughs> ain't got no reason to lie to y'all one single ant moving across this card because that is symbolic of the work we're needing to put in um because yeah things happen for us divinely but there are also things that we have control over that we can do or tap into to navigate our journey and for many of us we're foregoing the work we're refusing to make the decision we're con refusing to make the move we're refusing to buy the thing or go to the place or whatever it is that we're being divinely led to because we're being lazy and don't want to do the work and then there's that that um not only the laziness because for many of us it's that conditioning that we've been programmed to fear and doubt ourselves or the voice within when we are led to do something and so we just sweep it under the rug and we walk over the lumpy rug until we can't walk over it no more until we tripping and falling and then what we do we get up with our bumps and our bruises and we go buy another rug and we just put another rug down <laughs> instead of sweeping under the rug and so now we are being faced with an initiation by fire where since we won't sweep under the rug i gonna send a, a gust of wind through did i say initiation by fire i meant air we're experiencing initiation by air because god's gonna send a, a gust of wind through to blow that rug clean up dust and all you have no choice but to clean up your mess when you won't make the move when we won't make the move that god is leading us to make god will make the move for us we'll be put in predicaments where we really don't have a lot of choice in the matter because there is an agenda a divine agenda that is being played out and the more we resist the more we bring struggle onto ourselves and so if you feel <laughs> if you're resonating with the lumpy rug syndrome and you're one of those people who's not committing to doing the work of cleaning up under your rug and confronting your situations it would behoove you to reconsider because this initiation by air is going to blow your rug up and away and with it it's going to take all of the things that you have swept underneath the rug and bring them front and center to finally be confronted and cleaned up now that being the case it will also behoove you because this is something else that i've been observing to be diligent about protecting your energy because as we move through this initiation by air energy we don't have we can't afford i was gonna say we don't have time we can't afford to entertain any distractions anything that's not in alignment with where we're being led or what is being brought front and center for us to bring our attention to so by all means protect your energy be indiscriminate about who and what you're protecting your energy against if it's low vibrational and it ain't yours let it be detach if it's low vibrational and it is yours detach <laughs> handle your business 
and stay focused on what it is that you know deep within that you need to be focused on and if you are so discombobulated that you don't know what it is you need to be focused on in this season feel free to book a reading with me at www.turquoisemajesty.com but that is our work y'all we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into it so you can even further understand what it is that i'm referring to when i'm talking about this initiation by air you have a strong and powerful mind the mind can be a great asset it can bring comfort peace and strength as you take your spiritual journey it can also be a dark and destructive force undermining your power making you doubt your own heart and keeping you trapped in fear the mind developed without a loving spiritual practice can be a frightening weapon rather than a liberating sword how will you choose to use your mind power your mind can become more spacious and luminous if you practice empathy in it on a regular basis. The radiant mind can be a mighty warrior against fear and despair, encouraging you with thoughts of optimism. When not given a chance to empty, however, the mind becomes overwhelmed with unprocessed information. Much of it will be fear-based programming perpetuated by mass media, which is invested in controlling others and manipulating them by fear. This initiation, which liberates and opens the mind, empowers advanced souls to free themselves from manipulation and control. What that tells me before we move forward into this commentary is there is an emphasis on us developing a daily ritual. That is something that I am definitely needing to do. The only thing I do on a daily is go to the gym and I don't do that every day, but that's probably the most consistent practice that i have be consistent about how you are centering yourself and emptying your mind start over fresh with some form of meditation every day because when you don't you have that lumpy rug you have those things that you've consumed from mass media your experiences your thoughts from the day before last week that you have not processed and it's all cluttered up in there and you wonder why you can't think straight you can't get nothing done you're distracted we have a calling i like this my philosophy is all are called and few answer <laughs> but if you intend to answer in order to tend to your calling you're going to have to we are going to have to develop a daily practice that keeps our mind clear um, of clutter sweeping underneath our rugs and not being influenced by mass media like the tail lie vision yeah because that's all that is the tv is absolutely designed to perpetuate a narrative that is beneficial to the powers that be and not you that is why content like this is not broadcast freely on your tv screen you got to go really looking for the things that are going to feed you mind body and soul but it says the hallmark of a dysfunctional society is that the mind is expected to dominate the inclinations of the heart rather than serve it the mind can be trained to be a great manager creator and defender of what has genuine value to the heart but the power to feel what has meaning for us what moves us enough to rise above our fears and risk growth comes from the heart not the mind when the mind is given the task to feel and the heart is told to not feel paralysis confusion and discomfort are experienced as you enter in this is into this initiation you will feel the need to step back from what you've been taught and learn to question what you once held to be true as you disengage from habitual mental patterns you will begin to observe your thoughts rather than be swept up in them soon you will begin to experience yourself as the peaceful steady light of love that you are in truth will the mind go through its motions yes however there's no need to be afraid of this one step at a time your spirit shall guide your mind back towards peace you will change the way you relate to your own mind becoming more empowered as you soften the strident action of the mind you will see that you can use your mental gifts wisely rather than allowing them to cause you pain those who have strong mental energies 
can accomplish much in terms of communication, invention, and creativity, but they often also suffer from destructive self-talk and mental obsessions. They may even be addicted to thinking, which can wear them out and create cravings of sugar that can lead to depression and illness. Instead, it's much better to regularly take time out from the mind and be in the moment, feeling energized, playful, and at peace. This here, y'all, is a call for mindfulness, for being present and in the moment, and allowing yourself to just play and have fun and stop taking shit so seriously. A lot of what's underneath the rug are things that you've overthought, <laughs> that you have uh, thoughts that you have collected about something that ain't even that deep. Get that stuff out of here, yo. Your mind is a powerful creature. Tame it with persistence, compassion, kindness, and strength. Give yourself rest and an opportunity to switch off and empty your mind as regularly as you can. There's no need to judge or despair. This is, a, this is an advanced initiation and one that is brought to you only when you are ready. Consider it a sign of your spiritual progress. The world will benefit from you as you learn to handle your mental energies more constructively. This oracle is indeed an omen of greater peace and happiness in your imminent future. This initiation by air is a divine gift. It's a blessing coming to help you clear the clutter of your mind so that you can enjoy the present moment, so that you can receive uh, so that you can formulate new ideas so that you can chill and not think about anything at all for many of y'all you need a vacation stop thinking about all the this bill that bill this plan this business the children the husband the dog what mama doing what daddy doing this broke down that broke down clear your mind there's an invocation for the initiation by air and I'm going to include it in the um, description box, so check that out. But it says, I call upon the unconditionally loving ones to help me empty and refresh my mind, renewed and eternal love. May I express my freedom in making wise decisions that create joy and love in me and in the world. I ask for divine mercy, compassion, protection, and instruction to assist me in bringing my mind into a loving consciousness. May the light of the divine shine unobstructed through my mind, bringing peace to the world. May the unconditionally loving helpers of humanity help bring light, healing, and joy to the minds of all. Through my own free will, so be it. Y'all, take a load off. <laughs> take a load off. We are going to clarify the messages coming through by uh, with initiation by air with the Osho Zen Tarot. So, Spirit, please clarify the message that we received from the Lightworkers Oracle. Clarify this initiation by air for the collective spirit. What message do you have for the collective at this time? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> but at the bottom of the deck, healing. If not, if I'm not mistaken, this card is equivalent to one of the Swords cards. I'm thinking the four of swords and at the top of the deck, the eight of pentacles, ordinariness. Because you're needing to move through the day to day. You see this woman, she ain't stressing about nothing, honey. She done already planted the seeds, tend to her garden, and now she is enjoying the fruits of her labor. She's put in the work. Now she got her flowers in her basket and she's probably about to go put them in a vase. This is the retired woman honey the divorcee enjoying her land take a load off chill in this image here where you have healing and you have the solar plexus um looks like the solar plexus chakra there this person is, is healing because they are resting you're needing a time out to clear your mind and come back to whatever it is that you were so engulfed in you're probably going to see that it wasn't that serious to begin with or you're probably going to have more clarity about where it is that you're needing to go but you're needing to take a time out a chill pill 
And if you don't take one, God will give you one when he blow that rug up. <laughs> You're going to stop walking over that lumpy rug. You're going to stop buying new rugs to avoid sweeping underneath that lumpy rug. So the car that came out, child, trust and reversed, which I know for a fact is the Knight of Cups. It's equivalent to the Knight of Cups in reverse in this image here you have an individual who's taking flight they jump they're just trusting that wherever they are being led to go is where they're meant to go but when it's in reverse there's some resistance there you're refusing to go where it is that you're being led you're refusing to trust that wherever your heart is leading you is where you should be so we have Past lives, this is the number 17. Past lives in this deck is equivalent to judgment, if I'm not mistaken. No, that ain't judgment. Hold on. Wait a book. Oh, show Zen. Oh, show Zen. Where is it? That's what I get for pulling it out and not in the book oftentimes when i read these cards i have to have my little equivalent chart to see which cards like equivalent to the uh rider smith rider weight tarot deck so if oh no that's 13 Thirteen in. I'm gonna get it right now. It's death. I thought so. I don't know why I'm sitting here questioning myself. I've been doing this for years at this point. <laughs> it's the death card. Something is needing to end. A transformation is needing to take place. But it's not able to when you're not trusting that where you're being led is where you should be. There go that end again. Next card being existence. This being the past life card before I skip off. These are fears that are deep seated within you from a past life. These are patterns that need to be broken that fear of why you can't move forward because it's deep off in your DNA. It comes from your past lives. It comes from your ancestral line. And you're needing to do the work to heal that through some frequencies, Reiki, whatever it is. You're needing to definitely through Reiki. We already got this healing card with the Reiki uh, image. <laughs> so some of you definitely should consider that if you're looking for a healing modality but you're needing to do the radical self-care so that you can better exist in this lifetime with the magician card here so that you can manifest the life that you desire and put down those burdens as you can see here you gotta with this existence card that is the equivalent to the magician this woman is sitting on a leaf and in the cosmos. She knows that all things are possible and she's optimistic and she has hope about her existence and she knows that she's a part of the all, the oneness of the universe. When you are in this state of distrust, you're not trusting the universe to help you make the transformation you're needing to make, then you can't enjoy that existence of the all because you're in a low vibrational state. It won't allow you to. That requires being high vibrational in order to tap into that kind of energy that says that I'm a, I am attached to the lavish abundance of the most high God. I lack nothing. And until you do, you carry this burden that is the equivalent of... Is this the Six of Swords? Whatever the case, this card here is... Um, the number six the burden again that's that six energy coming up because something relative to the home something relative to relationship is a burden that you're carrying 
you're unable to exist you're unable to experience the possibility the endless possibilities that these stars represent you're unable to truly connect with your star family um as this this existence card represents because you're limited you're limited and you're carrying a burden but once you're able to tap in to some peace and some quiet god will show you just how to relieve yourself to release that burden you'll get the strength to do just what it is that you need to do as this number 10 rebirth card is showing us you got a uh, uh i don't know if that's a man or a woman a boy or a girl but this individual is standing on a lion and the lion <laughs> is standing on the back of a camel i'm gonna read the commentary on that one that card has always been super interesting to me rebirth this card depicts the evolution of consciousness that is, as it is described by Friedrich Nietzsche in his book, The Spake Zarathustra. He speaks of the three levels of camel, lion, and child. The camel is sleepy, dull, self-satisfied. He lives in delusion, thinking he's a mountain peak, but really he's so concerned with others' opinions that he hardly has any energy of his own. He's all in his ego. The camel is striding. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm I'm the man. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm he too worried about outward appearance and what he looks like to other people. And emerging from the camel is the lion. When we realize we've been missing life, we start saying no to the demands of others. We move out of the crowd, alone and proud, roaring our truth. But this is not the end. Finally, the child emerges, neither acquiescent nor rebellious but innocent and spontaneous and true to his own being. Whatever the space you're in right now, sleepy and depressed or roaring and rebellious, be aware that it will evolve into something new if you allow it. It is a time of growth and change. For many of you, you are burdened with things that are not yours to carry. And it's time to protect your peace sweep up under that rug confront what you need to confront and start living your life with the next card being the hermit aloneness also representing the virgo aloneness means this aloneness card means taking some time out to go on a, a journey to discover yourself to do what's best for you and what makes you happy to see and and reflect on what has created you to be who you are so that you can emerge with a new vision. Colorful, bright. Again, you back in that star cosmic energy connected to the most high and different dimensions. This individual here is almost like standing on the backs of on the back of this grounded individual, this individual that's underground because you are evolving to a visionary to someone who has a mission to carry out but you can't carry out the mission if you're carrying this burden this man here got a, a, a whole nother individual look like an older woman and a rooster <laughs> she got the nerve to be on his back he look weary as hell like i'm sick of y'all and, and what you been eating because you heavy as hell and you got my back hurting <laughs> and then she got the nerve to have this bird on her head and she trying to tell him where to go she's forcing her vision on him and that is the burden that he's carrying he's carrying the burden of it all but this initiation by air is not gonna allow it to continue so we're gonna tap into this is a good ass message y'all i hope if this relates to you that you actually take up the charge and i just seen 9 11 which is telling me that the message is urgent it's time and you're protected you're protected by archangel michael you're protected by your angels and ancestors you're protected by the most high to make the decision that allows you to rest your mind body and soul and stop taking on the burdens of others 
So Spirit, please clarify this message. What animal energy are we needed to tap into in order to navigate this energy? Baby, there was a lot of cards about to came out, honey. That was about to be the whole animal kingdom. The eagle, because we need to see that. Ooh, and the gull, two birds, represented by the number 36 with the eagle, which breaks down to a nine because a cycle is needing to end. And the gull, represented by the number 22, which breaks down to a four, restoring balance and creating a new foundation. At the top of the deck, we have the flamingo, another bird, number 40. And the owl, represented by the number 38, breaking down to e and 11. And that's all about mastery. When I tell y'all, it's plenty of different birds, I mean, different animals in this deck. And each and every last one of these cards that just came out represents a bird. We're definitely needing to look at things from a higher spec perspective. We're definitely needing to tap into bird energy and trust the higher guidance and wisdom that we're being led to move with. And I'm going to read the messages of number 36, the eagle. And 22, the gull. The eagle's attributes are swiftness, strength, keen sight, illumination of spirit, creation, ability to see spiritual truths, connection to spirit guides and teachers, great power and balance, dignity with grace, connection with higher truths, intuitive and creative spirit. When eagle soars into your life, it is never quiet or subtle. Eagle is a sign to reconnect with your spiritual path. She's showing you the way to the highest of your personal truth. The guidance she brings is one of the heart and your higher self. The sky is the limit. When you follow your highest directives, what is it that your heart desires? How does this tie in with your spiritual path? What is the bigger picture of these two things combined? As long as you are open, listen and allow eagle will show you the way. That the sky is the limit. We saw that in those two cards with the stars and, and, and the cosmos. Because that's the truth. Once you let down the burdens of others, the things that don't belong to you, once you put that shit down and do away with it and give people back their things, you can live the fullness of your life and head out on your spiritual path. You can move toward the next stop on your journey. The goal represents water. When you have gold soaring into your life, you're being asked to look at this situation from a different perspective. Take a step back, detach from any expectations you have, and look with new eyes. See if there are any hidden tools or resources that you couldn't see before. Shift your attitude the way a gull shifts on the current, and you will get to where you need to go. I'm also led to read the message of the flamingo. Flamingo always just reminds me of like vacation or being, being, um, being spontaneous and flamboyant. So flamingo makes an appearance in your life when you need to hear that no matter what is going on in your life, even if it's a drama field situation, there's always a takeaway lesson. She is here to show you that nothing happens that's not supposed to. Finding the lesson is critical to be able to stay away from the lower vibration emotions that you are experiencing. I told you, protect your energy, stay away from them low vibes. Take out a piece of paper and list possible lessons. You may not be in a place to see them right now. So use your imagination. Stuck in traffic and going to be late, perhaps if you were on time, you'd be in an accident. Once you start training yourself to look at situations in this way, life becomes very much less frustrating. And we know that the owl represents the wisdom that we're needing to take from our experiences and move forward. Doubling back to the message of the flamingo and how those delays may come to serve us. I definitely experienced that recently. As many of you know, I went on a trip to Tulum, Mexico that was divinely led. I went to a retreat that was held by Queen by Nature, had a ball. But I ran into all kind of delays on my way there. And it was so divinely led because I met someone who I know that I know that I know that I was meant to have a particular conversation with. And I just thank God for knowing that I needed to remain cool, calm, and collected and open to the experience. So I have, um, I chronicled that experience a bit in 
the latest episode of co-creating if you have not already checked that out it's co-creating travel and wellness where i had a uh dynamic conversation with my boo sicily also known as ama the goddess she's with wellness sanctuary ghana and africa and i also have posted um part one of my pilgrimage to Tulum so you guys check that out if you have not already remember to sweep around those lumpy rugs confront those situations that no longer serve you and make sure that you have the opportunity to heal and clear your mind and to do what's best for you because your growth your evolution it depends on it it is time out for taking up other people's cross <laughs> holding other people's baggage living other people's lives fulfilling other people's agendas it is time to do what is best for you and your calling and what you are meant to be doing and with that being said if you're needing any assistance along the journey i am here to assist you all um to make any divinely led suggestions for you as you move along the journey but yeah y'all that is the initiation by air. I hope that you all uh, remember to tap into all this bird energy. The, the flamingo, the eagle, the gull, the owl, my God. That's a lot of bird energy. That's a lot of seeing things from a higher perspective. And it's also telling me that you're needing a lot of rest. You're needing to tap into some ordinariness in order to heal to chill you need a break you need some time away so i pray that everything falls in line so that you're able to do that and with that being said y'all until next time peace